Hey traders, Raggy here. We're going to do a deep dive into crude oil, but talk about pullbacks uh, in, in the general context of how we want to handle double green pullbacks. Now, this is going to be crude oil, but I think in the coming days we'll see pullbacks across multiple markets, mostly the indices and the stocks and the sectors associated with them. But the idea is absolutely the same. So today we have our API EIA reaction. Now I mentioned API EIA because the way in which the market perceives the EIA number, the, the crude oil inventories number, is in many ways set by the way in which the market responds the session before at 430 to the API number. Now I know this sounds like a lot of alphabet soup, but one is a private inventory number, the other one is the Energy Information Administration number, and these two are playing off each other. Now the way in which we pull back today in crude in some way is going to be reflective of the, the buildups, but it's also going to be reflective of the weakness that we're seeing in equities. Now, much like any double green market that I would want to buy. Now, what is double green? The 8 above the 13, the 13 above the 21, and the 21 above the 34 EMA. And that means that the structure of those exponential moving averages, those EMAs, indicate that if we correct lower, whether that be a value area low, whether that be to the 34 EMA on the high, which by the way, both are actually very nicely coordinating right at that level. So I love that level there, about $36.5. If we pull back to that level, I believe that would be a nice conservative entry long. Now for the month of June, we have a point of control level. So that's this white line right there. Now for those of you that are unfamiliar with volume profile, and the point of control or the POC. What this is, is the single price level that has the most volume to the point at which the volume profile is anchored. Now this is anchored for the month of June. So throughout the month of June, that level, that white line right there represents where most of the volume has taken place, the single most volume. Now, a lot of traders will look at support and resistance based on candle bodies and wicks, but there is a under the surface sub market sonar type support and resistance. That's what I call volume profile. And in, in many ways, it's big brother market profile. You know, what is happening below the surface in terms of size, and not just wicks and bodies of the candles. So that's another level. I would consider that to be uh, the aggressive level. So between the aggro and the conservative zone, we just now touched that aggro point of control, which you can see right here is at about 37 and a half, 37.60. I'd like to look at a level around 36.60, 36 and a half. In that area, I want to position myself long via likely calls in crude, but you can also think about the QM mini contract and the CL full size, of course, but a lot of traders would rather take, say, two QM contracts versus one CL. It gives you a little bit more ability to scale in and scale out. Now, the scaling in and scaling out is pretty important in this situation because we have two distinct levels of entry. So we could enter one QM or one at the money call at the point of control and another QM or another at the money call in the CL, by the way, at the 34 exponential moving average on the high, okay? So these are levels that I'm watching. I do wanna be a pullback buyer in crude. Now I'm gonna also mention that this pullback buy is gonna be valid easily to about 33.90, to about $34, that area, okay? So these are the first two areas that I'm willing to buy from, but the buy is valid, what we call the point of validity for the trade is going to be at least a 34. You know, think about point of validity in terms of terminology. This is uh, a, a phrase I coined back in the early, uh, gosh, around 2010, 2011, for me to communicate to my stubborn brain that stop losses are very, well, they're manipulable, right? We can manipulate it. Uh, we can argue with it. We can negotiate it with it. We can move it. Meaning, well, 
well, if, if a $200 stop loss is okay, what's 250? If a one and a half percent stop loss is okay, what's a 2%? But if you communicate to yourself that this is the point at which the trend is no longer valid, it's a completely different conversation, at least to me, when I'm discussing moving a stop loss around, okay? The point of validity is gonna be just below $34 for the trend following buy. So be careful when you manipulate these uh, these stops, when you start to argue with a level at which you've decided you don't want the trade any longer, maybe start thinking about the validity of the trade and then have this line of demarcation called the point of validity, less able to be manipulated. All right, gang, hope that helps. Uh, I'm a bull and crude, and I'll see you in the next update.